Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Geo Package. Uh, it's an option to use uh, rather than the shapefile, uh, where you're transferring data to uh, someone else. You just want them to receive some uh, vector or indeed raster data, which is one of the big differences with with the shapefile. Um, shapefile's vector, Geo, Geo Packages actually store uh, raster as well. Um, it's uh, but but it's actually a key use of it is in uh, mobile apps. You get the sort of whole uh, little mini database on your on your mobile device uh, in, in quite a compact form, uh, with low resources required to actually uh, uh, load it, run it, even edit and uh, run run SQL statements because it's stored in SQLite. So so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Geo package. Uh, the video, this video will include QGIS. I'm on 3.10. It will also include ArcGIS Pro. And it will inc also include MapInfo Pro. Uh, mainly using the Orbis uh, map backgrounds rather than the um, the ones in Art from Mesri, the ArcGIS Pro stuff, OpenStreetMap, and ones aren't quite as good as the Orbis stuff. Um, but uh, at least we can have Orbis uh, running here, so you can see a bit of a difference there. Um, so, what are we going to do? So, I have QGIS, ArcGIS Pro, and MapInfo, and I want to take some data from QGIS and display it and show it in those other two. And uh, so from open source to the two commercial platforms. Uh, and I'm also going to be doing a little dive, not a deep dive, but a little dive into the SQL database so you can see actually what's being stored and how you can access it through a database, this sort of API, this uh, uh, tool, DB Browser for SQLite, which is um, I'm on 311. Uh, and it's just a very simple app to gain access to your SQLite database. Which I thought might be useful. So, like, like, so here we are. I've just got some uh, sort of demo data here, which I've used from, from previous um, tutorials. Uh, and, and like I said, it's it's what I want to do is turn turn some of this data selected into a SQLite database, which is effectively a geo package. So, a geo, geo package, which is implemented in the SQLite. SQLite database container is, is all defined by OGC and you, you can build your extensions and stuff if you want there's there are some extensions you want to be careful with that sort of thing with regard to you know future support and the like um, so I'm only going to show just just straightforward uh, vector vector in and um, right into it and then display and um, and then uh, show you it um, in the database let's get cracking so I've got some, um, uh, like I said, just some data here. Let's uh, um, oh, let's just use these. That was my intention all along. So I planned some of this sort of demo, and some of it I'm just going to go sort of uh, improv. So um, so you can just uh, get a bit more bit more depth into use, using the geo package but the um, so we've got these random points here so let me um, I don't know let's let's select a few of those so I've got it highlighted in QGIS hence it selects those and then what I'm going to do is just export that selection to save selected features as option and I've got uh, going to create a file so at the moment in this folder you can see C temp geo package tutorial uh, there's there's nothing here this is empty okay there's nothing in there this is empty so I'm going to call my geo, geo uh, package my geo pack uh, but I'm not going to call the layer name that these are just random points so I'm just going to call it my points. Uh, I'll stick with that CRS. I'm, I'm not going to go into all these other options here. There's 101 and you know that, that, that's exporting in QGIS perhaps another day. Um, but it's called my points and it's just those highlighted ones. 
one, two, three, four, and it's going to go into that um, my Geo pack. Press OK, and there it goes. It's added it to the layer. If I just turn off the random points, you'll just see those ones I selected. It's called my Geo pack because that's the name of Geo package, and then uh, my points. So you can see sort of qualified there. Um, and uh, if I go into the folder, you'll see it's created a Geo package. Uh, there's a couple of other files there. Um, I, I think I think that's to do with with sort of uh, read write um, permissions and that sort of thing, uh, sort of buffering edits and and the like. So I think that's what those two do. So, um, but uh, I'll leave them aside for the for the moment. Those two. So I've done that. It's added it back. Well, how do I see it in Map Info? Let's open Map Info and go to um, I forgot what the there it is. It's open table and and of course uh, I go to that folder. Nothing appears. Why does nothing appear? Because it's file of type geo package gpkg. Click on that, and there it is. So I click on my geo package, and I'm going to add it to the current mapper. What's in there? So when I click open, it actually sees that there's a layer called my point. It's given a default style. You can change where the tab is stored, or your map info users will understand that where the tab is stored, and you can you can um, uh, just ch change the where that goes, you can change what the style is, etc, etc, press OK, and then my points is added, uh, let's just, I um, can't remember where it was, uh, wasn't it around Budapest way, actually I can just do my points, um, the entire layer, that's what I want, there we go, so you can see them there, Actually, that symbol's a bit, a bit sort of. Uh, there we go. Obvious now. Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, so there's the points. Um, and uh, if I go to Info Tools, Info, I can click on a point and see what see what data. I, did, I didn't actually put much. There were it was sort of random data. Uh, that's part of a previous um, tutorial, so there's a color code there. I can close that and obviously I can browse the table. And, that, and that, that's the data that's in it. So that's all the, in the GIA package. So that's come through. So um, what about ArcGIS Pro? Click on ArcGIS Pro. Well, ArcGIS Pro um, isn't quite as smart, shall we say. Um, in fact, it hasn't even doesn't even refresh the previous uh, um, settings. There we go. So I knew it was wrong because there's a, there should be a My Points tab that was created by MapInfo. So um, you're always having to refresh these windows in ArcGIS Pro, even though they take forever to even load up in the first place. Um, it's not my favorite thing of ArcGIS Pro at the moment. Uh, so I click in there, and it lists what feature classes are in there. So it's looking at it as almost like a ge ge geodatabase type folder thing. So um, it's always called main, the main one, and it's my points. Press OK. And there we go. Automatically zooms, and there's my points. And um, you can look at the attribute data. Uh, there you go, just as in map info. So that, there you go. That's, that's there. So it's as simple as that to get it through. Um, one thing to note about that add data in ArcGIS Pro actually is I think I it yeah there's there's not a geo package actually sort of set here as as a as, a, um, as an actual format but it will appear it will appear um, so what's happening to the database then well let's have a quick look. If you go to do uh, the tutorial. So in here, um, you'll notice it's looking for SQL like databases. Well, 
it's it's actually got a different file extension. It's got that GP, GPKG, even though it is a, a SQLite database. It's saying actually this is a geo package. It's got geo feature classes in. I've got geometry. So you just change that to all files. Press open, and now you can see really what what the sort of geo package really consists of. What's really going on here, and you can probably start to see why it's so powerful on a mobile device. Um, you've got all this sort of power um, in such a small um, sort of sort of package. Um, you know, it's 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 pretty it's it's very good, particularly with uh, those mobile applications in in a in a disconnected mode. You know, just just and, and just generally for rapid sharing of uh, of databases. So there's a few things in here. I'm not going to go too deep. I'm just going to talk. You know, there's some triggers. It uses R tree indexes. You can see them there, and 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 triggers have to occur when you update the data. Obviously, there's various um, these these sort of tables. You can you can l look at and query what what's actually in here. So let's execute some XML for example. So you know, tell me about the SRIDs in here for example, and uh, 3857. What about um, you know what, what what table names have I got in here? Well, let's run it. Select table name from the package contents, and up pops my points, which is great. But let's go let's go back to um, QGIS, and instead of uh, and one, again one of the powers of additional powers of this is the multiple sort of feature classes. You're, you're, you're not talking, I've, I've just got these random points in there, but what if we wanted to have the background of these grids as well in the same file? So what I'll do is I've got my grid, so yep, select features. So I'll just, you know, I could, I could SQL select these, I could do what I like, I'm just manually selecting them. And then I'm going to export save selected features out. Um, just click on the geo package, you know it's in this temp package tutorial thing uh, folder and it's called migrants uh, and there it goes so it's now in that file so I've got this other uh, feature class um, in there called migrants uh, you can have a look at it here it says it's a storage geo package and it's uh, uh, polygons so if we now go back to uh, the database. So now, when you run this uh, query, you get my grids and my points. So let's close that for a second. So back in um, QGIS, you can see that when we add that geo package, this. Uh, but to your package, it actually prompts you for the feature class that you want. Anyway, hope that's useful. Uh, it's a quick look at uh, geo packages, and uh, it, it, like I said, it's it's very much something for the mobile device, but it's definitely an option to to be used in place of. Um, uh, of, of, of shapefile and just to do a little ad hoc thing just to you know just just to give it a whirl let's say I'm actually going to try a raster I know it supports it I haven't used one let's get rid of some of this uh, stuff uh, let's see where that raster is I think it's Austria or somewhere uh, so we've got this raster. Uh, so if I export that, uh, save as. Oh, so there's geo package. So I haven't done this before, folks. I'm, I'm any. Uh, um, so I'm going to select my geo package file that I've already got. And just imagine if you've got some vectors and you and you've also got a raster map background. Um, what about bringing them all together? So we'll call it this my raster, um, and uh, uh, I think the other stuff is three eight five seven, wasn't it? So anyway, let's just ma make sure I d uh, make sure it just aligns. Anyway, um, I have to do something on that. Let's press OK. Um, so down here it's doing stuff. It's obviously writing ninety nine percent. Seem to do that relatively quickly. Let's 
So, what's going to happen now? So, it's got my gear pack at the top there. Let's turn off. Uh, oh, it's my raster there. Um, interesting. Okay, let's turn off the four. There it is. That's coming from the gear package. So, I hadn't actually done the, the rasters yet. Uh, so, if I go to the properties on this. So, it's a raster 357. So it is a geo package, it's got statistics, uh, one band, okay, well, that looks, looks pretty good. Um, actually in between all this as well I, I just sneaked off and made another layer called the grid, so you might see that appear in the geo package as well, um, just before I did this. Uh, so, yeah, so that's a raster as well from the geo package. So in the database then, what's that? Let's open the database and see what that looks like. Um, let's just look at the, where's my table names? Okay, so it's got my raster there. Let's browse the data for my raster. Okay. Well, I mean, it's uh, <laughs> uh, it stored it in there. Okay. Um, so that's great. Yep, that's that's great. I'll probably do a bit more on the raster actually, um, but it's definitely gone in there. So now uh, let's do a new project. Let's discard everything. And let's add the. Um, that's got actually got a geo package add layer on there at the moment. I didn't see that. Uh, so let's open the raster data set from the geo package. See what happens. Oh, looks good. And there you go. Yeah. So there you go. So it's a geo package. Um, uh, let's add the vectors. Let's add, uh, there's the, the grids there, I I'd, I'd added that earlier. Let's add my grids. Let's close. And, and there's, there, you think? Evidence. I really should have got some on top of it, uh, of each other, but I hadn't thought that far ahead. <laughs> but I've got vectors, polygons, and raster, all within one single geo package. And what sort of size does that look like? It's um, that one. Ooh. That's interesting that the WAL file is so big. I wonder if that's because that's, um, that's where it's putting additional information. Um, so there's the GPK file. If you edit with Notepad, you can see right at the top there it says SQLite, so I know it's binary. Well, well, so you can still read some of it, um, but uh, uh, sort of compressed and stuff. But but you can you can read the header, so it clearly says SQLite format. This is a little update um, on the WAL um, SHM um, file formats, file extensions that you see in in, in your folder where you've got your uh, Geo package. So the, the WL is the right ahead log, that's actually what it means. But uh, initially I couldn't get rid of that. And what I found uh, I had to do in order to force the um, uh, writing back to the database of any edits, I get rid of the WAL file, uh, which was storing my raster, because uh, it was quite big, is in the layers, I just had to make sure that I had removed the all the layers. Simple as that, uh, and the um, connections from ArcGIS Pro and Map Info. So, because I had them all open, it was uh, not letting me uh, sort of write back. So, I could have continued just using that WAL file, but that's not very efficient, really. Um, that's where all, all, all the raster data is being stored. So, now you can see after, after I closed it down and removed the layer, um, so this is something I literally just found out. It's, it's just got this one 24 megabyte geo package. So if I point add vector to the geo package and say add, 
Um, sorry. Let me just go back there. It was on raster, wasn't it? Hold on, hold on. So if I go to add on vector, so this is a vector layer, geo package, say add, it then prompts me for whatever vector layers I've got. Okay, I've got that one. Press OK. Uh, and you can see the, the my grids. Let's zoom to there. So, so there they are. That's, that was the selection from previously. What about if I go to add and go raster and make sure it's the, and it's that same geo package. You see how it's got that SHM on wall again. Um, so um, so it's already set up the write head log, which by default in QGIS you can avoid that. Change the journal, um, and then add it uh, because it's on raster. There's only one raster in there, and it's loaded the raster from the single geo package as well. So I got um, so they both come up, which is great. So now what I'm going to do, just to hopefully prove that I found exactly the, because this is now the second time I would have done this. I've got the SHM and wall in there. So there's no edit, so it's zero, that WIL file. Uh, I will now go to this group layer and remove the group. Okay. Uh, it's not open anywhere else. I've got Arches Pro and stuff shut down. Let's go to here and lo and behold, there's no WIL, right ahead log, there's no SHM. So there you go. That's that's uh, the WAL SHM um, uh, uh, file extensions uh, solved. Um, just make sure you've you've closed them off here. And but uh, but more, most importantly, in they're not open in other apps. So my issue there was I had them open, had that uh, geo package open in um, Argus Pro and Map Info, and you know basically everything at the same time. So naturally, it wasn't letting me um, uh, sort of sync up the data into the database. Uh, just just dump all the edits into it, which was the raster file. Anyway, um, uh, that's it. Thanks so much.